Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much, uh, Hans and Lucy, for the opportunity to let you speak. And um, just a short commercial break. Um, this is my book about one call. It's mainly a book, uh, mainly about uh, um, the reaction of uh, Europeans um, in to Ron Paul, but also about his campaign. But it, uh, unfortunately, it's in German. Um, but here it is. It's over there. Um, for the fifth in Europe. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, European reactions to the Ron Paul phenomenon. Um, and the three points um, I'm going to make. Uh, there's a mirror of the development in the USA. Um, there's um, the digital nation, the emerging digital nation, and um, the changing image of America in Europe. Now, um, about the um, mirror of the development in the US, uh, so in many ways, um, the European reaction to Ron Paul and uh, of America in a small way. If anything, the European mainstream media um, treated him worse than the American mainstream media. Uh, they hardly registered him, and when they did, uh, in half a sentence or so, have been mirrored those in the big article. Um, they usually dismissed him as some kind of crack. Uh, the German magazine Der Spiegel called him a court jester. Uh, the daily paper Die Welt called him a laughing stock. Um, and there were some very few uh, respectful and thoughtful articles or commentaries, but they were the exception to the rule. One of them was by Agus in Raimondo in uh, the London Guardian. Um, and these exceptions, most of them, came only after the primaries had begun, and when it was becoming clear that Paul was no immediate threat to the establishment. And the European television coverage was even worse. It was practically non-existent. But, wherever he was mentioned, and where open commentaries uh, were possible uh, on the websites, a very high proportion of these comments mentioned Ron Paul favorably and complained that he was being badly treated. Thus, again mirroring the developments in America because of the internet, Mainstream media blackout has not stopped thousands of diverse and very dedicated Europeans from rallying to the congressman and his freedom message. Um, from um, sorry, from the uh, Ron Paul Europe dot net website alone, there are linked thirty European blogs dedicated to the Ron Paul revolution. Here are some of them. And these are the dedicated blogs only. Not included in this count are the generally libertarian-minded blogs and websites not specifically dedicated to Ron Paul, but which report and comment on him and his movement regularly. Ben Novak, an American who lives in and works in Slovakia, and who is the administrator of the Google Group, Europeans for Ron Paul, told me recently, and I quote, um, the number of Ron Paul websites in Europe which are not in English is astonishing. Obviously, these are not aimed at, Europe, uh, sorry, at uh, American voters, but rather at carrying the Ron Paul message to Europeans. I have seen websites in Estonian, Polish, Hungarian, Croatian, Portuguese, French, German, Flemish, Norwegian, etc. This to me is an astonishing development. Not since the communists had information in every country and language has such a thing occurred. End quote. And this leads me to the second point, the, the digital nation. Uh, these blogs and websites together with about 30 European Ron Paul meetup groups have served to connect like-minded, freedom-loving people crossing borders and language barriers, ethnicities, philosophies, and creeds to form the core of what Jay Roberts, in an article on BlueRock.com, has called a digital nation. A digital nation is a cluster of people independent of their geographical location, um, networking for a common cause, 
and in this case for the establishment of a true individual freedom, no matter where they live. They inform each other, help each other, learn from each other, and they are bypassing, that's the important thing, uh, the established institutions, the media, the schools, the parliaments, the political parties. They are quite literally out of control. Jay Roberts observed, and I quote, the fact that the first digital nation formed around Ron Paul as a cause rather than Obama or banning trans acts uh, is a good early indication that perhaps digital nations will tend towards libertarian friendly. The most, the most striking result of this digital networking for Ron Paul in Europe was the small but significant event of the Strasbourg Tea Party. You will all be familiar with last year's Boston Tea Party money bomb, when the record-breaking $6 million were donated to the campaign in just 24 hours on December the 16th. You will probably also know that it was organized totally independent from the official campaign, and is thus a further indication of an emerging digital nation. Anyway, uh, on that same day, in solidarity with the Ron Paul Revolution, about 30 Europeans converged in front of the uh, European Parliament in Strasbourg. Some dressed up as American Indians <laughs> and, and to, dump, to dump tea in the Rhine to celebrate their hero and uh, to just have some fun talking and being together. This, this event shows two things. One, a high level of understanding of the issues at stake. The issues at stake being the, the increasing civil decentralization of power and the transfer of power to international bodies like the European Union. And two, it shows that Europeans are beginning to learn what America historically has meant to mankind and could still mean to mankind in the future. <coughs> This brings me to the last point I want to make. The changing image of America in Europe. Since the Second World War, the feelings Europeans, at least Western Europeans, have uh, towards America can be characterized as manic depressive. Uh, on the one hand, America is hailed as the great liberator from Nazi oppression, and up to 1989, uh, at least, as the great protector against the Soviet threat. Also as a provider of seemingly unlimited prosperity and seemingly unlimited freedom. Um, but, on the other hand, the cultural influence of the United States were, was felt as overpowering. America uh, was often is seen as the superpower exerting hegemony on most of the rest of the world callously imposing its will uh, on its way of life and other people. Uh, this is a demonstration in 1972 against the Vietnam War. Um, basically, it was uh, um, the conservative-minded people like the fact that uh, soldiers in America were protecting them from uh, the East, but they didn't like the, the cultural influence, the uh, libertinism, the rock and roll and everything, and the left-wing people, they liked the cultural influence, but they didn't want the soldiers. So basically on both sides, the schizophrenic um, split, but revert and reverse. Um, so both these images of the freedom bringer and the oppressor um, uh, convey some truth, but neither of these images convey the whole truth. Uh, together they do not harmonize. Uh, they do not fit together. There is something missing in the picture. Something is wrong. And in the meantime, however, these views formed a somewhat schizophrenic image, um, and it has generated an unhealthy love-hate relationship that Europeans feel towards the US today. In the light of this fact, you know, Ron Paul has achieved an amazing feat. He has, of course, uh, achieved many an amazing feat. But I want to add to this list of achievements the fact that as a result of his candidacy, he has laid the foundations for a fundamental convalescence um, in the perception of the United States and Europe, and probably worldwide. He has helped many to overcome the manic depressive view of America as a country by reintroducing to the world 
the view of America as an idea. And some may call it the American dream. I prefer the term idea because ideas can be rational, whereas dreams are mostly irrational. Um, the American idea is that, indi that individual freedom is the best and greatest hope for mankind. It was uh, Robert Wilder Lane who, in 1943, wrote in her book, uh, The Discovery of Freedom, that the American Revolution was, in fact, the world revolution. A bold announcement to the world that, as a whole, that man is free. And uh, that it was an ongoing revolution against the forces of oppression all over the world. This led her to two conclusions, one right and one wrong, in my view. The wrong conclusion was that American entry into the Second World War was to be supported on the grounds that it was a continuation of this revolution. It was a wrong conclusion because by 1943, those in power in Washington were already busily dismantling the Constitution and planning to abolish personal freedoms. Lane's right conclusion was that Marxism and socialism, including national socialism, were in fact counter-revolutions against the historic rise of individual freedom the freedom caused mainly by the existence of the United States and its constitution. Lane's mistake was to overlook the fact that by 1943, the counter-revolutionaries were already in power in Washington. In our day and age, this counter-revolution has almost completely succeeded. The American constitution is now largely ignored by those in power. They therefore feel free to um, do as they please and at home and abroad. The important part of this counter-revolutionary effort has been the systematic removal of all true knowledge of American history and the philosophy of liberty from the school and university textbooks and classrooms and from the mass media, not only in America but all in Europe as well. It is in the resulting intellectual desert that the manic depressive view of America could flourish. Therefore, in the 20th century, America was no longer the unblemished leading light of freedom. But now, 12 months of Ron Paul's campaign and the Ron Paul Revolution, an estimated 4 to 20,000 people in Europe have learned for the first time in their lives the true history of the American Revolution and the philosophy behind it. I'll quickly explain how I come to this statistic. Uh, I haven't got any statistics except the magic number of 30. Um, but first, let me tell you this. Out of 100 people concerned about any issue, so the general rule of thumb, one writes a letter about this issue to the politician. That is the 2080 rule 20% of 20% of 20% of what it says. That's the one person. <laughs> Going to Strasbourg is an even higher level of commitment, so I'll take another factoring of 20% in there, and that's, so, so that's 0.16%. There were 30 people in Strasbourg, 30 Ron Paul blogs in Europe, 30 uh, Ron Paul meetup groups. So 30 seems to be quite a magical number there. <coughs> there they are, 30 meetup groups. Wow. <laughs> Do you want to see that again? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't see it. <laughs> um, so if 30 is 1.6, uh, so, sorry, 0.16%, oh, then 100% is 18,750. And if 30 is only uh, what 8 percent, then we have 100 percent is 3,750. So the that is people, including everyone who is in a low commitment, but in general supportive of Ron Paul in Europe. And if you take the one statistic we do know, proper statistic, is one million votes in America in the primaries out of I don't know uh, 250 million uh, people eligible voting. Um, which is a higher percentage, or in all, than uh, about 20,000 or 500 million um, Europeans. Anyway, um, so these um, have, are learning the true history of the American Revolution. They are learning that Lincoln wasn't the white knight in shining armor, and that the paper money inflation and business cycles are not some immutable facts of life. Um, they are hearing about the Austrian School of Economics, 
uh, the, um, and that government intervention always leads to unintended consequences, calling for ever more intervention. This is all stuff that Ron Paul has been talking about, and you can see on YouTube. They are learning um, uh, that uh, we have to reverse this trend. They are learning that um, US participation in the First World War was detrimental to freedom in Europe. And above all, however, um, they are learning that there is another meaning to America, that that for a big country which is throwing its weight around and ordering people to be free, they are learning that America is above all an idea, and they like this idea. And crucially, they feel emboldened by the example of that form to actually fight for the realization of this idea of home. Um, I predict that the European branch of the Ron Paul revolution, uh, sorry, of the Ron Paul digital nation, just like the American branch, is going to keep on growing long after the 2008 presidential campaign is over. At this point in time, however, it is difficult to see what concrete changes it will bring about in Europe and when they will happen. Um, but one thing seems certain. From now on, the, the powers that be have, will have a persistent and ever-growing thorn in their side. And given the de decentralized nature of the, the internet, it would need the creation of a world government to actually pull this thorn out. Now, this may actually happen, a world government, but if anything is to stop it, I predict that the worldwide Rumble digital nation or its successor will play a major role in reversing the trend toward world government back towards a decentralized and freer world. Thank you for listening.